I'm Penny Elphick. I'm an artist, which is quite important to me. I have a cinephilic esophagitis, except that at the moment, my acinophil count um, cannot be found. I have probably had uh, the symptoms since I was a very small child, but it wasn't until 2020 that anything was really done about it. I manifested with what appeared to be a heart attack, but um, it wasn't, and it took another four or five years, I think, before they found that it was a cinephilic esophagitis. I do have various other esophageal problems. As a very small child, um, I swallowed a prune stone, which damaged my esophagus. Now, I have no memory of that, fortunately. But from that point on, um, I had swallowing problems and food would become uh, lodged. I so um, eating uh, was quite problematic for me. Um, uh, then, and I was frequently sick. Uh, and then when I was a teenager, of course, it became much worse because I think one is much more stressful, stressed at that time. And it certainly impacted on my social life a lot. I, so when I really started having problems in my teenage years, I was back and forth to the doctor. Uh, but nothing much was done until eventually somebody referred me for um, a, um, a barium meal, a swallow test, and that just didn't show very much. So fast forward a few years, just, just managing the symptoms, the heartburn and the reflux and the swallowing issues, etc. Um, uh, I suddenly began to get extreme pain in my chest and I was um, referred to a cardiologist. So they really thought it was um, a heart problem. And a couple of days later, in the middle of the night, I manifested with this pains in chest, chest and arm tingling and was taken to A&E where I was kept in for over a week and so I went up to have um, an angiogram only to be told that my heart was fine and uh, upon saying well how am I supposed to manage these symptoms they said you need to see a gastroenterologist and they discovered that I had severe esophageal spasm this did take quite some time you know to be uh, discovered but they were very very thorough and I was extremely lucky That sort of carried on for a few years. I had um, a Skatsky ring and I had um, Barrett's esophagus, but the Barrett's I was fortunate was had not yet turned into cancer. The Skatsky ring had to be dilated and that took several um, appointments. When I first had the Skatsky ring dilated, for the first time in my life, I could actually swallow a pill without difficulty. And it was like a miracle, really, um, before all this pill taking was a nightmare. A couple of years went by, and I woke up one morning to have, I couldn't couldn't take any, any, couldn't drink anything. And I just knew there was something terribly wrong. And I rang up and they said to come in straight away. And the inside of my esophagus was in shreds. So the consultant said that although he'd taken the tests for a cinephilic disorder, um, he didn't need to, see, need to wait for the results because he knew exactly what was wrong. And that, really revolutionized um, how I am. Um, so at the moment, I'm 
quite fit and healthy. I do have periods of esophageal spasm, which is really awful. I do sometimes swallow food hard, but that's much better. Um, and I think compared with some people, I've been very fortunate. Some years ago, I went to a dietitian. I was, oh, it was suggested to me, and I was re resistant, but I went, and she took me off wheat, dairy, and soya, and um, it's the best thing that has happened. Um, it's made uh, the symptoms much, uh, much less. It's difficult if you're eating out, and. Um, you know, I think people find it a pain. You know, oh God, she's coming. <laughs> no wheat, no dairy, no soya. But it's worth all the trouble at it because the symptoms are infinitely less. I still get esophageal spasm, um, but uh, it's not as bad as it used to be. The If I eat wheat by mistake, and I'm not celiac, um, I feel very bloated and it makes me feel very unwell. The soya biscuits, I don't know what it does, but as soon as I eat one, normally, obviously by accident, my esophagus goes into spasm. It's almost instant. I'm lucky I, I, I can manage the symptoms quite well. Occasionally, if um, the, the chest pains are particularly bad, I, I just go and have a sleep and... Um, take some extra medication. I was looking on the internet and I think I went on to something like Guts UK because there was very little information about a cynophilic esophagitis and um, I happened to see that there was this organisation, EOS, and I contacted them straight away because I was really excited to find this. And um, uh, they, Amanda Cordell, who runs it, has been absolutely amazing and they've been so helpful. Um, and it's nice to have these webinars that they do uh, where you hear from other people, but you also hear from consultants and, and nurses and other practitioners. And it's it's just good to know what else is going on out there and to make you realise that actually it's not as bad as some people. You're a lot better off. But I think for parents with children, EOS is just amazing. I would like to say to people that have chest pains or difficulty swallowing or bouts of nausea, or heartburn, that awful, awful reflux, go to your doctor and badger them. If they just sort of fob you off with stuff, which they shouldn't, persist because it's very important to have a diagnosis. Um, and once you've got it, um, I think it's a relief and the good side, the good sides, the medicine, the medication does work and it does allow you to have a reason, um, a normal life really and, and go and treat yourself. If you're feeling really rubbish, perhaps a walk somewhere nice, I don't know, some people don't like walking or watch something on television or something to distract you. Um, the other thing which I'm a great advocate of is mindfulness. I think it just, it takes the mind away from the dis, this um, discomfort and, and distress by concentrating on something, the rise and fall of your abdomen. Um, it really is worth pursuing.